Welcome back. I had a friend ask me to make a platform bed, so to Home Depot I went. In the lumber section, they have a birch plywood panels that are 8 foot by 4 foot, and they're 3 fourths inch thick. For a queen size bed, you want four of those. And you want to get six of the panels cut 86 by 22, and then two panels cut 63 by 18 inches for the headboard. I will include all the measurements down below and also list the measurements that you need for those of you needing to do a king size bed. The headboard is optional, so if that's not your style, just skip it. My local Home Depot does offer free cuts. The preciseness really depends on who you get that day, though. Once I get the panels home, I glue them together with my Gorilla Glue. The required thickness for the panels that is determined by the hardware that I'm using is one and a half inches. So I'm gluing two of the three fourths inch together to get that. I just place the other board on top and then line it up as best as possible. My cuts not were, were not 100% accurate, so I lined them up as best as I could. Then I used wood clamps to clamp the four corners together and then used a heavy weight in the middle to make sure I get a nice seam all the way around. After a few minutes, I came with a damp paper towel to wipe out any oozing glue. Wait about 30 more minutes and then did that once again to remove all the excess glue and then let that set overnight. The next morning, I used my 120 grit sandpaper and my orbital sander to go around all the edges first to make sure they are nice and smooth and that no material will catch on them. Booty bump! And then I also sanded the entire surface of the panels. I don't know about you, but my booty bumps the camera way more than I'm willing to admit. It's kind of ridiculous. After sanding, I use my super fancy feather duster and then come back over the piece with a damp lint-free cloth to remove any dust residue. Once the surface is dry, it is ready to stain. I am using Verithane's Premium Wood Stain in American Walnut. I use a clean t-shirt piece to put some stain on the t-shirt and then wipe it on in a circular motion. The birch wood, even after a staining, does have some grooves and detail. So I found that a circular motion worked best to get it down into the grooves and then went back across it with long swipes going with the grain. If staining and painting projects is your thing, you are definitely in the right place, so go ahead and hit that subscribe button. In this clip here, you can see how off the cuts were, but this is actually the underside that I'm staining right now, so you won't be able to see the difference when it's flipped over. After I get the stain on the entire piece, I do go back over it with long swipes going with the grain. I also use a detail brush to get the stain in all the cracks and uneven edges of the side. I allow the stain to sit for two minutes on the entire piece and then use a clean t-shirt piece to wipe off any excess stain.
I allow the stain to dry for two hours and then use a 220 grit piece of sandpaper over a sanding sponge to lightly go over the surface. I'm not trying to remove my stain, just remove any pieces of outside that may have dried in my stain. Wipe the dust off with a clean lint-free cloth. My go-to protective wax is Johnson's Paste Wax. I use a clean piece of t-shirt to get some wax on the t-shirt and then wipe it onto the surface in a circular motion. Once the wax is on the entire surface, I will go back over it with long strides going with the grain and then let the wax sit for 15 minutes. When the wax is dry, buff it. I then applied a second layer of wax. It's not mandatory, but I usually do for extra protection. I use the same method as before. Apply it in a circular motion, then go back over it with long strides. Allow that to also dry for 15 minutes, and then buff it. Here are the wood panels all done and ready to be assembled. Team lift. I had my husband help me load these into the back of his truck so we can take them to my friend's house. And I almost took his face out at one point, too. My bad. We wrap up loading with an adorable couple's fist bump. Yeah. Big Hero 6, watch it. On FloydHome.com, the bed is $245 for Queen, and the extra headboard is $125. I will definitely put a link down below for HomeFloyd.com. This is the Queen bed frame and headboard that comes with two ratchet straps to hold it securely. The bed hardware comes available in black or white. The Floyd Home website is very helpful and has detailed description of how to assemble the bed. No tools are required, but I would definitely ask for a helping hand if you're trying to do it by yourself. Assembly is fairly easy. Place the panels in the holder side by side. There are ratchet straps to hold the bed together securely. Slip the headboard pieces on Put the headboard piece in, tighten it down, and that's pretty much it. So let's talk about the money. Why make your own platform bed instead of just order one? The queen bed frame was $245, the headboard $125, which is optional. $240 was spent on wood, $30 for supplies. That's a total of $640 for a brand new, nice, custom color, queen size platform bed. If you log on to floydhome.com, you have the choice between only two different colors for the wood panels. And for the queen bed frame plus headboard, you will pay $1,295 before shipping and tax. With just a few hours of your time, you can get the same platform bed in any stain that you want for less than half the price. Needless to say, my friend was very happy with her bed. I hope you enjoyed this video. And as always, until next time.